Feminine nominon. Feminine nominon? Is that a word? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. My name is Beth, if you are new here and I like to talk about music. And today I'm actually gonna be checking out an album called The Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess by Chappelle Rowan, Chappelle Roan. I'm not really sure how to say her name, but this album has been out for a minute. I was not really planning on listening to it, but then one day I was just chilling and Red Wine Supernova came on my recommended shuffle and I have listened to it basically nonstop since then over the course of the last day or so. I am obsessed with that song and we will get into it more as we go along here. But it really made me curious about this whole album because I don't know, I just think that song's insane. Also, I watched a live performance of her doing that song because again, I feel like that song kind of sent me down a rabbit hole and she has a really good stage presence. She's. I don't know, she seems very talented from what I've seen. So I'm really excited. Um, from what I've heard of Red Wine Supernova, it gives me like country meets sparkly dance. I am actually from the Midwest. So I, I feel kind of a connection to the album title. The first song is called Femin, Femin, Femininomen, I literally can't even say. Femininomen, okay. The first song is called Femininomenom. The first song is something and we're going to listen to it now. Okay, okay, don't hurt yourself. So close, but then he lost it. You sent him pictures and playlists and phone sex. He did this is not what I saw coming at all. Let's get coffee, let's meet up. This is so pretty. I'm so sick of all I love. Why can't any man hit it like get it hot? What? It's a fan. Can you play a song with a fucking beat? Get it hot like Papa John. Papa John? It's a feminine phenomenon. So let's say it's working out. You pretend to love his mother. Lying to your friends about how he's such a guy. God, this is so reminding me of Red Wine Supernova because it has the talking versus like the singing and it has the same kind of like unexpected transitions that Red Wine Supernova does. Obviously it started out with those strings, which was like the last thing on earth I saw coming. I definitely thought it was gonna be an upbeat song. Like that whole first section was super, super pretty and it was just not what I saw coming. And then she did that like insane transition, which I, I don't know, I didn't see that coming. And if you've heard Red Wine Supernova, you know that it has a very unexpected chorus. I love this so much. Oh, it's so fun. And it has the the bridge with the talking, which again is really reminding me of Red Wine Supernova. It has this like chant like energy, right? Like you're in a room full of women and you're all just chanting or something. Did you hear me play the fucking beat? <laughs> the best part of the song. Ooh, okay, obsessed. I already have a feeling, a very good feeling about this album already. I mean, super cohesive, super similar to, you know, Red Wine Supernova and I love that song. So I feel like if those songs are any indication, I'm probably gonna really like this album. Red Wine Supernova though is a bit more like country. It has a little bit of a country undertone mixed with like 
still the dancey kind of sound. And so I'm curious if she's gonna bring that to any other songs. I do remember her saying lyrically, this album is just straight nonsense. I think she literally said she just wanted it to like make no sense and just be kind of fun. So I'm definitely getting that energy, like keep it hot like Papa John. Like obviously it doesn't really mean anything. Um, okay, Red Wine Supernova. I've listened to it so much in the past two days, but let's just listen again. <laughs> It's got that country in there. Out on the deck, put her K9 deep in the side of my neck. Mini skirt and my go go boots. I just wanna get to know you. Fell in love with the thought of you. Baby, why don't you come over? That's the switch up that I was talking about. It's so unexpected. I actually hated the chorus of this song the first time I listened to it. I think I was just thrown off because it is so different than the rest of the song and I just never see it coming. Even after I've listened to this song a lot, it still kind of throws me for a loop, but it's actually my favorite part of the song now. So it's it's really grown on me the more that I've listened to it. I like, I like, you like, you like, long hair, no problem, it's my type, that's right. That's my favorite part of the song. Baby, I will, cause I really want to. Just wanna get to know you Baby, why don't you come over? Red one supernova Okay y'all, let's pick it up now Feels like a hoedown I got a California king, okay Maybe it's a twin bed yeah. This is my favorite part of the whole song of that song so much. I love the whole like acapella choir layered vocal feel at the end there. But yeah, I don't know. Whenever I listen to that song, I think of like square dancing. I saw her, her Spotify bio says currently rhinestoning a cowgirl hat or something. And I think that kind of perfectly explains that song. I actually don't think any other description of it would do it justice. Okay. Mm, bass. Production. Nothing that happens when it's late and you're dancing alone. She's in my head saying it's not attractive. Wearing that dress and red lipstick. This is what I wanted. Oh, this already feels a lot more like classic dance vibes. Like, I'm wondering if any other song is gonna have the country element of Red Wine Supernova. Could be a good, good girl, even if I tried. Cause after me, I'm feeling kind of her acapella vocal moments. I kinda wanna kiss your girlfriend if you don't mind. This is kinda growing on me. It's definitely not really what I'm in the mood to listen to right now, but it's kinda growing on me. Baby, put your hands up. Be a freak in the club. Yeah, that was definitely my least favorite so far. It wasn't really the sound that I was in the mood to hear right now. It kind of grew on me though as it, it as it went on. I feel like I enjoyed it more, but very catchy, very dancey. It was boppy for sure. Um, but the next one is coffee. I'm super excited for this one because I love coffee. It's my favorite drink. She's gonna give us a ballad? <laughs> Probably not. There's no way there's a ballad on this album. Can't meet you for dinner at the Italian places where I met your family. I'll meet you for coffee. Cause if we have wine, you say that you want me. I know that's a lie. No else is safe. Every place leads back to your Okay, I feel like this one's a little bit country now that this guitar is coming in. I'm kind of hearing that. 
I like the idea of a ballad here. I also love, I love the idea of this song. I really like the lyrical content. I'll meet you for coffee, because if we have wine, you'll say that you're sorry. I know that's a lie. I think that's a really heartbreakingly beautiful lyric, but sonically, it just didn't really interest me. It didn't really catch my attention. I felt kind of bored, to be honest. And I, I like ballads. I'm not a ballad hater by any means. I liked the idea of a slow song there to kind of bring things down after it's been pretty hype the entire album. But I just feel like you're gonna have to do a little bit more with the melodies or the production to like draw me in. I don't know, maybe I'm too much of a hater, I'm sorry. But the next one is casual. My friends call me a loser Cause I'm still hanging around I've heard so many rumors That I'm just a girl that you bang on your couch You said we're not together So now when we kiss I have anger Love the cadence of this song No attachment but we're God, the flow of this song is gorgeous. Usha's about to do something there. I feel like the sound of this song is pretty casual. It doesn't build a whole ton. There's a little bit in the chorus, but like, it's kind of just nice to listen to. The chorus is gorgeous though. The flow and the melody there. I sort of feel like this is what I was missing with Coffee. Cause it's a nice mix between like, it's not a ballad, but it's, you know, it's one of those like mid-tempo bops, I think they call it. It's not super upbeat, but it's also not a ballad. It's a nice middle ground, but it has ballad energy because of the lyrical content. I don't know. I really like this one. I kind of feel like Coffee, I would just delete her and put this over that. That's what I would do. I kind of love her outros. They're always so freaking beautiful. God, her builds. Okay, oh my gosh, her builds are so pretty. The ends of her songs are often like my favorite parts of the entire songs. There's always some like acapella, choir, giant thing going on and I really love that. Yeah, I really like that one. I feel like that kind of brought me back after Coffee and you know, after Midnight weren't my favorites. She has some lyrics that are, are just very intense for me. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, The next one is Super Graphic Ultra Modern Girl. Okay. You know what they say, never waste a Friday night on a first date. But there I was, in my heels with my hair straight. She's got a story for us. This man wouldn't dance. He didn't ask us. <gasps> and he was wearing these fugly jeans. Fugly jeans. Believe in the planet and you can't come. Leaving the planet, you can't come. What does this remind me of? Oh, there's a song that this reminds me of. Okay, transitions. She does have insane transitions in some of her songs. It's very sci-fi vibes. <laughs> I was not a fan of that one. I, it was another one I wanted to like it, but I just, I couldn't bring myself to like it. It was just a lot. It was just a lot of production. It was a lot of, I don't know. It was just a lot. Hot to go. 
in all capitals with an exclamation point. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, the echoey effect on the vocals here. I'm gonna be fully honest right now. I'm struggling to get through this album. Um, it's kind of just going in a direction that I don't vibe with, but I'm really trying to like give it a, a full chance. All right, I kind of stopped listening to the album and then I'm coming back to it a few days later. I actually think it's been a couple weeks, but I decided to continue the album. I wasn't really sure if I was going to. I wanted to like Hot To Go, I really did. And I liked certain parts of it, it just, I don't know, the direction was kind of going in a way sonically that I wasn't really connecting to. But today, you know, it was a new day. We're gonna see. Um, the next song is called My Kink is Karma. We broke up on a Tuesday, ruined my credit. <laughs> it's comical, bridges you burn. It's hard when you have a meltdown in the front of your house and you're getting kicked out. Oh, I love this pre chorus. Oh, Oh, I love oh, People say I'm jealous, but my kink is watching you ruin your life. Tight your hair. People say I'm jealous, but my kink is karma. Oh. Wishing you the best in the worst way. I actually really like this one. Uh, there's a lot of cadence that I really like. The pre-chorus is insane. That chorus really hit me too. Um, I think that was, that was kind of what I needed. I, I think this one, you know, it's kind of bringing me back a little bit. Cause you're running your mouth, oh God. God. That's the best part of the album. <laughs> People say I'm jealous, but my kink is karma. Oh. It's hard when you're going through hell. It's hard, oh God. Now this, oh God. why are her outers Always so beautiful. People say I'm jealous, but my kink is watching you. Oh, I really like. <laughs> I really like that one. Oh yes, I really really like that one. That's another one that I added to my playlist, along with uh, the ones that I have in my playlist right now are feminine. <laughs> I still can't pronounce it. Red wine, supernova, and casual, and now my kink is karma. Those are the those are my faves so far. Um, the chorus of that song was insane. It was super catchy. It was super fun. It just went so hard for no reason. Yeah, and the pre-chorus and the outro. I feel like her outros are always my favorite part of the song. They're so dynamic. You know, she completely changes it up for the outro, and I think that was such a beautiful but like impactful outro. Anyway, um, the next one is picture you. Picture you what? <gasps> Little breath. Draw the blind. Slip off my pretty dress. Down my chest. When I think of you. Every both lips on the mirror. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is so different. Her voice sounds like a completely different artist. Do you picture me? I picture you. Am I in the frame from your point of view? I'm just scared to say half of the things I You know, she's very blunt with her lyrics. That is one thing about almost every single one of these songs. There is nothing that is left to the imagination. It, it really is just so blunt and so in your face. And yeah, I think I've talked about it, but I'm not a huge 
family. It's it's a little bit TMI for me. This whole album is, it's a little bit outside of my comfort zone. It's a little bit something that it, I just don't think I needed that much information. But, you know, I do appreciate that she's upfront. I do appreciate that she's transparent. You know, you're not wondering who she is because she's kind of just open about it. But this one is really pretty. I gotta say, I kind of like the vibe. It's, it's a ballad and it's pretty. It's not my fave, but it's pretty. At the library in your hometown Then it kind of starts feeling like a slow dance. Oh, I don't know. That is really pretty chorus. Is that a yodeling? This is really showing off like the deeper register of her voice. I mean, now she's obviously going up to the falsetto, but earlier in the song, like the minute it started, her voice was so low. It was so much lower than I think I've heard it on this album. I don't know. It's been a it's been a couple weeks since I like started the album, but I don't know. Her voice just sounds really different on this song. She sounds like a totally different artist. Oh, I think that just got prettier and prettier as you listen to it. I think that chorus was absolutely gorgeous with the melody and yeah, I don't know. Like it was just really pretty. Um, I also wanted to say, I did watch the casual music video. It was really interesting. Um, I don't know why there was like a weird mermaid like siren thing, but it kind of made me emotional for some reason. Like by the end of the video, I wanted to cry because it just really, you know, I, I think Chappelle, Chapel, I, I think I'm mispronouncing her name. Um, I think Chappelle really did a good job of like portraying the emotions in the music video. I think she had this way of like acting that was really believable. I think that's what stuck out to me the most about the video. Anyway, the next one is called Kaleidoscope. It sounds very nice. <sighs> oh. We're really slowing things down with the last few tracks. Here we go again. Everything is fine. I guess we could pretend everything has changed the way I write your name the cursive letter A if you really want to leave I'll never make you stay why are they leaving? just go back to being friends and love is a kaleidoscope how it works, you'll never know And even upside down It's beautiful somehow Love is a kaleidoscope What is this? <laughs> what is this? And if you change your mind I will understand Friends and love is a kaleidoscope you don't even realize it's the chorus and then it, it just, it's super flowy. It's beautiful summer, color of the rainbow. Don't be Her outros are on a different level. Level up. I don't know why I thought that was so pretty because it really is a very simple song. You know, it's really just the piano and her voice and I feel like, I don't know, I, I don't think it was like my favorite one. I don't think the melodies were super memorable and stand out, but at the same time, I just thought it was absolutely beautiful and it kind of stopped me in my tracks. I think just her voice really lent itself to that song. Um, okay, anyway, the next one is Pink Pony Club. I don't know what that means. Is this just like the ballad section of the album? Can't ignore the crazy visions of me in LA I heard that there's a special place Where boys and girls can all be queens every single day oh. The American dream of going to LA Tennessee mm. She sees her baby girl I know she's gonna scream Oh. 
I really didn't know what to expect with this song. I thought it was gonna be a different vibe, but this is very, again, kind of that like country with a, a sparkly twist vibe and all about how she moved from Tennessee to LA, I believe. The chorus is really kind of has that addicting melody behind it once again. I don't know that this is like sonically my favorite on the album, but I do think it has an interesting twist, you know, and I think it's relatable for people who have like followed their dreams or, you know, just have a dream of living somewhere else or doing something else else moving somewhere. You're a pink pony girl and you dance at the club, oh mama. This is unlike anything I've ever heard. Don't think I've left you all behind. Still love you in Tennessee, you're always on my mind. But I love this as an outro. Loved, loved the chorus and the outro. It was definitely very interesting. It was very unique. It was different than anything I've ever heard. The next one is Naked in Manhattan. Yes. Hi, Chapel. Oh, her name's Chapel. It's not Chappelle. Okay. New crush, high school love again. The rush of slumber party kissing. Oh, I love Don't this. Touch. I'm not the crossing line, constant like cicadas in the summertime. Boys suck and girls I've never tried. Touch me, baby, but your lips are mine. Could go to hell, but we'll probably be fine. Oh, I've never done it, let's make it cinematic. I wanna know, baby, what is it like? I sing that Lana song, it makes you cry. Me Lana songs, we watch it every night, and we both yes. have a crush on Regina Joyce. Why Regina? This is so catchy. I love this whole freaking vibe. Could go to hell, but we'll probably be fine. That delivery. Climbs up, touch me, touch me, touch me, touch me. That's, I love that. Ooh, she is taking me on a ride, I'm not gonna lie. Ooh, this layering though. I love that that's paired with, yeah. Yeah, her outros, like she, she did that. <laughs> like, I love how she paired naked in Manhattan with the other part of the song that was like, it was all converging and that was really impactful. That one was hella catchy. It was so freaking catchy. It was interesting. It was out there. It was, you know, she's very out there. She's very bold. I stretched myself across four states. Oof. Where my dreams lay. This is not what I was expecting. <laughs> Thought this was gonna be a bop. See foam. And the endless sun rays Come get me out of California No leaves are brown I miss the seasons in Missouri I'd make you proud To think I almost had it going But I let you down This is making me really understand the album title, The Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess. It's a really interesting title because it has two contradictions in it. One is like Midwest and princess, two words you wouldn't necessarily pair together. And the other is the rise and fall, obviously opposite 
actions. And so I think this is kind of making it all make sense along with Pink Pony Club. It seems like she went off to LA. She thought she was gonna make it. She thought she was gonna be this big star, make everyone proud. And then she actually just ended up missing where she came from and missing her roots and maybe, you know, not having the success that she anticipated. I think that's really interesting and really real. You know, I think there's so many times in life when we try something and we, we're let down or it just doesn't go how we expect it to go. And I, so I think that's really real. Definitely an interesting concept for an album. I know that Chapel, now that I know how to pronounce her name, I know that she's come out and said this is supposed to be a very nonsensical kind of album. Like it's supposed to be just random and fun and weird and it's not really supposed to make sense. I believe she said that in an interview. And so thinking of the other songs on the album, I feel like there were a lot that were not this deep. Like they were not even necessarily part of the same narrative, but there is this continuous narrative of being let down, being sad by how her life turned out versus like how she envisioned it. You know, maybe she did want it to have a meaning for the people who really look for meaning, but she also wanted it to be, I don't know. I, I really don't know. You know, there is a lot of emotions to this album. It's definitely not just fun. I mean, casual. Ugh, it's a sad song. Like it really is a sad song if you really think about it. Okay. The rise and the fall, you know, she perfectly lays it out. Like you're getting the rise, you're getting the fall, you're getting the fun moments, you're getting the heartbroken moments. So I mean, that's literally life. Too hard to find oh. reasons to stay. I love this change up. I do love a production change. That might be one of my favorite lyrics on the whole album. I was never told that I wasn't gonna get the things I want the most. That is so real. You don't have to go to California and be trying to like make it in the industry for that to be relatable. I think everyone can relate to that. Dreams don't always come true. And it, that shit sucks. And like, you're never told that, you know? You're not told that the day you're born. And it is really hard to grapple with that. It's hard to grapple with the fact that your life didn't turn out how you planned, how you envisioned. It's just hard. And it's something I've been reflecting on a lot lately because I haven't gotten to the place I've wanted to be in, in certain areas of my life, just like a lot of other people. And you know, there's so much expectation and pressure too. Like you're supposed to be here by this time in your life. Anyway, that's real, really love that lyric. That's like kind of, it's kind of reminding me of Guts by Olivia Rodrigo. The last track on the album, she says, I got the things I wanted. It's just not what I imagined. I think it was the last track. And you know, again, it's that whole idea of like, well, I got here, but now what? And I'm not super satisfied. And I have all these emotions that are complex. And yeah, I don't know. I'm getting deep now. So let's keep, <laughs> let's keep listening. No. No leaves are brown. Okay, I thought she said the leaves are brown, but she said no leaves are brown. I miss the seasons. I, make you <sighs> I really love this whole build. Come give me all of California. <sighs> no leaves are brown. I, miss I love the chorus so much. That one reminded me a lot of. Um, I think it was Picture You, where at first I was like, okay, you know, I don't know that sonically it's like really standing out to me, but then by the end of the song, I just thought it was so beautiful. I loved the chorus. I loved the whole production change. I thought that was such a good, tasteful decision. It kind of kept your interest and it just made the song more enjoyable and feel less like it was dragging. But we are on the last track. It is called Guilty Pleasure. Okay, <laughs> do that with your voice. Land it on the internet. We'll stir it in my head. So shame on me and shame on you. I fantasize what we would do. I want this like a cigarette. Can we drag it out and never quit? To get me guilty, guilty pleasure. That was a no for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
I feel like I had mixed feelings on this album. There were so many different sounds and different vibes. And I feel like anytime that's the case, you know, there's gonna be songs that you like more than others. I would say I was kind of 50-50 on it. I liked half of the songs, I think, and the rest, you know, just didn't really speak to me. You know, this was a very, a very loud album. You know, it's not very subtle. It's not very, I don't know, but at the same time it is introspective. So it's, it's interesting. Definitely a very unique album. Definitely an album that is different from a lot of music that I've heard. You know, the lyrics like are so graphic. And that's not really my vibe, but she is herself. Like she is who she is. She doesn't really put on a facade. So, I mean, I think there's some value to that. There's some merit to that, definitely. It was really interesting how she kind of like merged the Midwestern sound with the sparkly, like dancey sound. I think that was so interesting. It's definitely gonna be interesting to see if she releases more music. I don't know if this is her first album. Like, I honestly don't know anything about her, but I am really glad that I checked this out because there are some songs that, you know, I'm cherry picking and I'm adding to my playlist and I feel really excited about. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction if I go back to the album and I'm able to rank it I'll leave my ranking up I haven't been doing as much ranking lately just because it stresses me out it stresses me out especially if I haven't listened to the album a lot and then I feel like I'm rushing to rank it when I haven't like given it a fair chance to to know my ranking so that's why I haven't been doing that but yeah I am glad you know I'm glad that I checked this out I'm glad that I listened to the second half of the album today because I discovered some songs that I really liked on that section so Yes, definitely comment below what your favorite from the album is because I feel like everyone's gonna have different answers for that. Uh, thank you so much for watching, for being here. Feel free to like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.